What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Ace Attorney with an Actual Lawyer. I'm your host, Zach, joined by our voice actor, Wes. Hello! And our actual lawyer, Bridge. Today's episode is sponsored by La Pasticceria de Di Maria Grammatico. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We said, we said, hey, you know what? Go, going for these big brands, impossible. Going for the most obscure, specific mom and pop shop, cannoli place in Italy. Surely they're gonna sponsor Listen, us. Home, home We're of the world. We're sponsored by a random cannoli place that Wes found online. Yeah, in it's Italy. home, home of the world's best cannoli and Genovese. Gen, Genovese. That was definitely pronounced right. Uh huh. Thank you so much. Uh, check them out. They're real sweet. What was what was their what was their name one more time again? Uh, it was La Patisseria Maria Grammatico. Oh, okay. That sounds fancy. Before before we start this week's stream, there is one thing I have been neglecting to do for some time, but it finally oh. happens. Oh, no. You asked for it. Oh, sh I, I fucking it's, headphones. It's finally on. the naked stream, right? No. God, no. Oh, it's the crown. Okay. It's the crown. Yeah. Uh, I don't know Jeez. if I can wear that it was with my, my headphones That was my on. second guess. Shit. <laughs> well, I can I can do it like this. It looks real dumb, but I guess that's kind of the point, huh? You asked for this, everybody. <sighs> it's a beautiful crown. Thank you. I know. You know, heavy is the crown. <laughs> heavy is the crown. <laughs> All right. Well, with that out of the way, let's uh, <laughs> let's actually get into the game, shall we? Uh, okay, uh, we're in the antechamber. We just got smoke bombed out of the building. That's right. That's true. What uh, what on earth just happened in there? Mr. Narahoto, I've managed to find out what happened there. Mr. Sato. I was told it was an advanced form of smoke grenade, a type of exploding device that releases smoke in a grenade-like fashion. A <laughs> smoke grenade? It's, it sounds like the sort of things ninjas use. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, like, oh, they, they have ninjas in England? Shit. Uh, Zach, contact our resident ninja and ask him if smoke bot is smoke grenades. Oh, or I think yeah, they yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, have, we have an actual ninja retainer here at Save Data, so we'll, ch we'll check in to confirm that statement. Yeah. Hey, folks, if you haven't checked out uh, <laughs> Shadow Taxi with an actual ninja, it was a great stream, one-off uh, video. It's on our YouTube. Go check that out. <laughs> hey, listen. Every country has ninjas. Japan's are just the shittiest. That's why we all know about them. Oh, I like that theory. <laughs> They're just making sure everything is safe now. I think the trial will start again before long. But who would have done something like that? The police managed to catch someone who was trying to flee the courtroom, apparently. Now they are the shittiest ninja. <laughs> flee the courtroom? Why? I mean, do you, did you forget about the whole smoke grenade thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a young girl of around 15, I hear. A young girl? Then could it be the other passenger that McGilded was just talking about? My thoughts exactly. So he wasn't lying? Oh, what's become of Mr. McGilded, actually? There are so many things I needed to ask him about, but he's not here. Oh shit, is this the secret second murder? Oh, no. I think he was summoned to the prosecutor's antechamber to answer questions. Along with the young girl. That's bullshit that that Van Zeeks gets a uh, priority. <laughs> oh yeah, in this universe, the prosecutor always gets priority. Yeah, that's true. Who is she, I wonder? And what was she even doing here at the trial? She was taking a huge risk, and for what possible benefit to herself? There's another matter that's troubling me. What's that? The 20 pence. Hmm? Oh, um... According to the coachman, Mr. Beppo. I love that animation. And how many notes of pages? No, how many pages of notes have you been taking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he took four passengers that night at a fare of five pence each. That comes to a total of twenty pence exactly. But now it seems like there, there. Now it seems like there were in fact five passengers. 
Which means the figures don't seem to add up again. Uh, she's right. That is strange. Counsel for the defense kindly proceeded to the courtroom. The trial will recommence in five minutes. Oh, th thank you, officer. We'll go straight away. Well, whoever she is, I imagine this young girl will be asked to take the stand and testify now. I really can't imagine what she's going to say, but it could alter the whole direction of the trial. We'll know soon enough, Miss Susato. Yes! the young girl next to Mr. McGilded. Look, she must have been the one who caused the disturbance before. We do love this character. Now yeah, the chat's going well. Well, after that rather eventful recess, uh, the court will now resume the trial of Mr. Magnus McGilded. Now then, Lord Van Zeeks. My lord. I believe you have established the cause of the smoke which veiled proceedings earlier. It seems to have been an advanced form of smoke grenade, of the sort typically employed by the army. Or yeah. ninjas. Good gracious! The army? What in the devil's name? It was an elaborate attempt by a young girl to cloak her escape from the public gallery, but she was caught. And now occupies the stand. Hmm. Your name, girl? Are you responsible for the smoke grenade which induced such pandemonium here in my courtroom? What is the meaning of this deplorable behavior? <clears throat> if I may, my lord. Yes, Mr. McGilded. I think perhaps I ought to explain here. Why it is that this wee lass was here in the first place, and why she tried to bolt like that? Tis all tied up with the events of that night, so it is. Hmm. Very well, Mr. McGilded. Uh, give your testimony. You will explain to the court exactly how this young woman is involved in the case. Just what did happen that night? <sighs> it's not like a defense lawyer needs information or anything. Mm. All right, the young girl. On the night in question, I took the back seat into omnibus and promptly nodded off. Then Pagora, a loud tud, and a wee scream woke me up with a fair start. There was a fella collapsed on the floor at me feet, so I sat him up on the seat across from me. Why the fuck would you do that? Then I turned to find out where that scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all curled up in a ball, hiding her wee self away. Bullshit. <laughs> I remain somewhat baffled, I confess, uh, but from what I gather on the night in question, this young girl was indeed riding in the omnibus. Is that correct? Tis exactly as the defense counsel said. Sorry, earlier Giant Figma said his face is secretly a stop sign, and now that's all I can fucking see. <laughs> <laughs> Octagon looking ass face. <laughs> <laughs> this last was the fifth passenger, my lord. Very well. The defense may now cross examine the witness. Also, is the young girl dead? Because I actually haven't seen her move at all. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready, Counsel? 
Yes, my lord. <clears throat> or rather, no. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Well, what I really meant was no. I love that he just spiked the camera in this shot. He's just looking directly at us. <laughs> or rather, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is very much the record scratch. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where to start. Uh... <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for that contribution, Von Zeeks. <laughs> uh... Die would just start pressing everything. I, this one I'm going to skip because I feel like... Press it! Why? Why? But we'll, we'll, we can go from here. What the fuck does Bagora mean? <laughs> Speak uh, English, Dart. <laughs> <laughs> a loud thud, you say? And a scream? No, it was more of a tud. Got him. Aye, that's right. How could I explain it? It sounded as someone falling to the ground. Or that sort of noise. So... You think it was the sound of Mr. Mason falling to the floor, having been stabbed? Well, now, you remember I was asleep at the time, so I wouldn't like to say. Mm. And when the sound woke me up and I opened my eyes, there wasn't a soul to be seen in a carriage but a fella on the floor. Hmm, you didn't see anyone. But at the same moment, you did hear a scream. Ah, from the seats above you on the roof deck, I presume? Not above me, no, my lord. A twist from inside the cabin. Uh, and of course, Giant Penguin quick to say, Bagora is the Irish way of saying by God, first known of, uh, first known use in 1715. I Bagora. That's, that's pretty cool. But I wasn't altogether thinking about the scream. No... I was too stunned by the desperate sight before me eyes. Uh, is that crashing? Oh, you, you sat him up. The victim, you mean? That I did. On the seat across from me, as I said. I could plainly see the poor devil was already gone. So I took the liberty to take my finger in open his mouth and close it and say, Oh, hi, Mr. McGilded. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. I do love your park so much. God damn it. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe... Uh, and you wouldn't leave a dead man just lying on the floor now, would you? I mean, that's, that's what you're supposed to do, yes. Tis common courtesy, so it is. <laughs> I find that a little hard to believe. Ara, Lord Van Zeeks. Now, why would that be? Did he just say ara ara? Ara ara. <laughs> ara ara. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you wake to find a man lying dead at your feet in a carriage. Any normal person would hail the cabman. Any upstanding member of London society, that is. Why does this guy hate McGilded so fucking much? I think he hates everyone, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty much... He's, like, people racist. He, he doesn't discriminate in that he discriminates against everybody. <sighs> Don't make me ara ara again now. <laughs> well, now, as you know, I'm in something of a special line of business. The business of lending money at exorbitant rates of interest. Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is thankful for the help I offer him, and some would even see me dead. I mean, you made it so that if you die, all your debts are forgiven, dude. Like, wh why would you do that? I mean, he doesn't really care. I mean... So I do try, when at all possible, to avoid getting myself into a tangle with trouble. Are, are you suggesting you were just going to leave the man there? Heavens alive, no! I was always intended to report it, so I was. Only, I had a mind to find out the whys and wherefores first. 
the whys and wherefores? Right you are. And there were some details I wanted to understand before anyone else got to meddling. That wee scream I heard, for example. Wouldn't your good self do just the same? Hmm. Yes. The scream he says he heard at the same time as the thud and... Uh, sorry, let me do this again. Hmm. Yes. The scream he says he heard at the same time as the thud of the victim collapsing. Uh, okay. Um, I'm afraid I don't... I don't understand. I'm sure you told the court that there was no one else in the carriage except yourself and the victim. So I did, sir. So I did. As far as I could see, that is. What did you mean by that? Well, now, tis a queer thing. Do we scream I heard as I woke up? It came from, if you'll excuse the vulgar expression... Under me backside. I can't. That's called a fart. <laughs> <laughs> McGillard's farts just sound like screams. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, nervous toots. If he if he screams and like if he gets scared into farting, it just sounds like two people screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon the expression, but I ripped arse. <laughs> Good gracious! Under your backside? What the fuck, man? You can't say that in court. Back that thing up, Mr. McGilded. <laughs> and when I lifted the seat on which I'd been sitting, <laughs> I found a huge brown stain. <laughs> <laughs> I found there was a wee cubby hole there for storage. Mr. Narahodo, we can examine the omnibus ourselves, remember? Yes, uh, of course. The whole bus was submitted as evidence. This would be oh a very God. good time to have a thorough look around inside. And that's what I found her. Uh, okay. I mean, we are, we we understand what he meant by that. Like, Hold it. didn't even make a big deal out of it. You say she was hiding herself. Aye, that's right. Twas hard to see in the dim lamplight, but she was all curled up in a wee ball when our eyes met well. My heart nearly stopped beating in me chest. Uh, you're really overacting this. Still and all, I pulled her out from under there and sat her on the opposite seat or er, in set on the seat opposite so I could have a wee chin wag with her. Now that's also a word, huh? Chin wag? Yeah. Yeah. His his chin wags pretty dramatically, I would imagine. <laughs> the seat opposite. That's right. Just next to the dead gentleman. I was there. about to say, I was like, so you put this girl next to a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> you sat this young girl next to a corpse, sir? Well, I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> That's gross. His face is like, he's about to say, ah, da, ah, da. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as I'm sure I, I mentioned, a gentleman in my position can all too often find himself in mortal danger. So, I needed to find out just who this urchin was, you see. Hmm... And while I was in the middle of talking with her, I heard another scream. A fella's voice this time. Presumably that scream was Mr. First, who was sitting on the roof deck seats. Right you are again, I would say, sir. Looking down through the skylight, he must have seen this young girl and the gentleman with a knife in his belly. In other words, uh, the previous witnesses did not, in fact, see you at all, Mr. McGilded. What they believed to be yourself and the victim was, in fact, this girl and the late Mr. Mason. Aye, my lord. Then why the f I 
And I guess we'll find out why he didn't say this, but goddamn it pissed it me was, off. As I think everyone understands now, shut at the back of the carriage out of sight. It is certainly plausible. If the defendant is somewhat <coughs> diminutive in stature. What the fuck you're saying about me? <laughs> <laughs> and readily confused, perhaps, with this uh, young girl. Uh, can we see the picture of the... Don't we have a picture of what the two of them look like from above? Uh, I, I know they've shown record? it. I don't think it's part of our... No, we just have a picture of because it was body. just it was just like it's told in a flashback, so I don't think we have an actual piece of evidence of that. Lame. Yeah. All right, never mind. And or uh, after that, of course. Oops. What? He does Van Zeeks's bow. What the fuck was he's, that? He's copying Van Zeeks. <laughs> Would the scream from the gentleman over us, the driver realized something was wrong and pulled up the horses. I do wonder how you must be feeling, Mr. Narhada. Being the defendant's lawyer, and yet finding myself as stunned as everyone else is at this testimony, uh, let's just say it's trying. My thoughts go out to you in these trying times. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> During these these no trying photos, times. <laughs> we certainly had precious little time to talk to Mr. McGilded before the trial. But we mustn't be dispirited. We must just try to learn all the facts we can. Uh, when when we arrive in London this morning, I didn't see my day panning out like this. <clears throat> <laughs> and Dark Angel Lodge had 100 bits saying, Van Zeeks is secretly Irish. <laughs> that's what the Irish name he has. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I was doing his voice wrong this whole time. <laughs> Mr. Narahoto, no grumbling, even in your head. Mr. Sato, what the fuck? Uh, how do you know? <laughs> With a Susato mind meld. Oh, no! Get out of my head! <laughs> uh, actually, wait a minute. Uh, Did you spot a contradiction? I think maybe. This this could be a maybe. What side of the back seat was the the extra thing? It was the back. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yes. So that, that means he was telling the truth. Fuck. Yeah. I think we just need. I think we might. This might be one where we just need to press every statement. All right. And see what they. And then Ian's gonna prompt us from there. All right, well, let's press the first one. Then. It's not so even said we need to learn all the information that we can. That's true. And when you first got on the omnibus, were there any other passengers already on board? There were not. The cabin was empty, and there was no one on the roof deck either. You were the first passenger, as it were. I see. Aye, and that's why I took the back side as I did. Tis the most comfortable, so it is. Could you explain exactly what you mean by the back seat? By all means. It is how you already described it earlier. I'm talking about the seat opposite to one in which the poor gentleman who was stabbed was sitting. Like I said, tis the most comfortable and where I feel most at ease. And of course, I enjoy gazing through the skylight from time to time as well. Thank you for that contribution, Bonzi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I've heard enough. Uh, the events as explained are clear in my mind. However, at least one conundrum remains. Who is the girl? Why won't she move? Who's that girl? Who's that girl? It's... I don't know what her actual name is yet. <laughs> <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. Her name is Gina Lestrade, my lord. That's a pretty good name. Uh, uh, here's, a, here's, a, here's a little Sherlock Holmes fact. Uh -huh. um, Lestrade is the last name of one of... Sherlock Holmes's detective friends. He has mm. two 
main detective friends, uh, Lestrade is probably the more popular of the two. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, I only say I, I only say that because he is uh, featured in um, the BBC Sherlock series with Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm -hmm. um, Inspector Lestrade uh, is a Scotland Yard detective. Makes a lot of appearances in Sherlock Holmes stories, and then the second one is uh, Tobias Gregson who you will maybe hear that name later on mm -hmm. in the game. I almost want to interrupt you when you're like, uh, uh, Lestrade is the last name of, and I was like, of Moriarty. <laughs> Moriarty Lestrade. <laughs> uh, also, Dark Angel Altrude, another 100 bits saying, he took the backside because it's well cushioned. <laughs> hey. I mean, that's the thing. We haven't seen his butt. Can we can we just make it canon that the Gilded has like a fat ass? <laughs> yeah. He's thick. He's thick down south. <laughs> My anaconda don't want none unless you got buns on. <laughs> She's a chancer. Earns her crust among large crowds, relieving people of their purses. What's commonly called a pickpocket. What? This girl here, a petty thief. I mean, she has smoke grenades, like. Hmm. Order! Order! Is this true, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade, you will answer the question. Yo, what the fuck? Yo, what ah! the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> <Where's it, Bob? laughs> Judge was hit with sludge. It's super effective. <laughs> How dare you? What is the meaning of this? <laughs> the girl, she's gone. Open your eyes. <laughs> oh, no, it's her. I'm over here. Hell yeah. I move, I shot you in the face so I can move a couple <laughs> steps to the right. It was a weird choice for them to have her image fade and then reappear here. They just should have had it not be there. But not be there. Yeah. Also, Giant Penguin uh, points out, fun fact, in the Sherlock Holmes stories, the only thing you find out about Lestrade's first name is that the first letter is G. Yeah, I was going to say, I was trying to think about it and Could remember it was not Lestrade's coming to my head, so that's that <laughs> makes sense. There you go. Good gracious, a cow! What was the point in that little sidestep? I think you're right, Ryanosuke. I know what you lot are thinking. Grown-ups are all the same. <laughs> this dirty little dipper, you'll say, slipped up and got caught on the job. She got herself backed into a corner, so she knifed the gent. Go on, that's what's in your heads, ain't it? No, not at all. But you did do it, didn't you? This is a court of law. What, what the? Die. Jesus, God. <laughs> Fart gun. <laughs> McGill, it's like. Ah! <laughs> oh. Oh, she does the yeah, coin thing. The coin flip yeah, thing is so cool uh -huh. to me. She does the no, coin No, she's really cool. Thing. Look, knives of a coward. Only thugs use weapons like that. All I need for what I do is these fingers. And apparently guns full of yeah, what? powdered bombs. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a professional, all right? Maybe not in your eyes, but I got pride in what I do. <clears throat> Let me guess. You don't count smoke guns among weapons for thugs. Hell yeah. Look at this. <laughs> You're one step ahead of the game, Bridge. Oh, this? Yeah, this was in the in a bag I lifted the other day. Down where they keep the four-wheeled drags. It's nice, isn't it? I like the pink best. Uh, also, I, I guarantee this is going to be revealed shortly, but uh, the symbol on that gun is the same as on Sherlock's shit. So that's uh -huh. fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do not wave that thing in my direction again. 
Hmm. God damn it. So, you admit that you were riding the omnibus on the night in question. No. Tis all right, lass. You can tell him the truth now. All right, yeah. It's just like the Irishman said. The court accepts this girl, Miss Gina Lestrade, as a valid and significant witness in this case. Accordingly, young lady, we will now hear your testimony, if you please. You will tell the court exactly what happened in the omnibus on the night in question. All right, if I have to. So, I stuck inside the carriage before they hooked up the horses, just like always. But it was a right old waste of time. I got nothing to show for me troubles that night. I'll tell you, you can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. It's pitch in there. Then after a while, I heard this loud bang. Nearly jumped out of my skin, I did. And the scream just came out. It's because of that. It's because of that, this swell found me. He did help me get away, mind. Yes, he let you go. I fail to understand why you would let this street urchin go, Mr. McGilded. Oh, yeah. Oh, tis simplicity itself, my lord. You see, she could possibly have killed the other passenger. I knew that for a fact. Uh, how? As I'm sure I said before, sir. I was sitting right on top of the place where she was hiding herself. I yeah, think a weird. demonstration is called for. I don't see how it is. Now sit! <laughs> I, I don't this think a 17-year-old was... has the power to push him off the chair from inside the luggage compartment. Especially considering how dummy thick he is. Yeah, that's exactly. good. Damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I was sat that night. And the cubby hole of which you have spoken is underneath this seat, I presume? Hmm. Effective zoom, then. Yeah. Yes. It does appear just uh, large enough to accommodate someone of the girl's stature. Could even be a Russian ballerina. Oi, but of course the wee lass was stuck in there. Because I'd parked myself on the seat for the duration. Ah! Oh. So you see, that's why I let the lass bolt. I knew that if the police found her there, they'd automatically assume she'd done it. But I couldn't live with myself if a young life was ruined when all the time I knew she was innocent. Even though you must have realized your action would result in your own innocence being called into question? <sighs> Not at all, my lord. Not at all. I knew it in I knew in my own heart that I was innocent. Why did it cut to the juror there? So I thought it was worth taking a punt on my own good name for the sake of this less fortunate lass. My goodness. What a perfect gentleman. Okay, I was setting this up. My lord! This this fine example of a man cannot possibly be guilty of a heinous crime like this. I'm ashamed of myself for ever doubting you, sir. This is stupid. Wow. <laughs> hmm. hmm. 
With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly at the truth every time. Wait, does this mean we win? We win! Hey, look at that, we did it. We did it, everybody. Get booked. Now I work for information examination. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't you say that was a lame thing to do? I need to do it. <laughs> I instantly changed my mind. Shut up. <laughs> Go fuck Saints yourself. Saints alive! All six members of the jury consensual in their leaning to a verdict of not guilty. Well, you know, I I thought uh, I, I thought this case was much longer than this. You know, I guess we're gonna go home and we'll finish this. We we'll be back with justice yeah. for all next week. The looks, there we go. All right, we win. Let's <laughs> go. Cheeky Nettos, any anyone? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mr. Arado, this well, it must mean. It must mean what? Are you paying attention, Ryan? That we're victorious! This dude... We've... won? Uh, are you sure? This seems to... Oh, You're there right, he right, goes. Right. What? Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, uh, it's such a good... It's such a good animation. What? <laughs> if the sight of my iron-heeled Wellington offends, pray... Do forgive the discourtesy. What a fucking sentence, too. You don't like my boots? Get out of here. <laughs> Why did they pick those? Okay. Leg. Hmm. This really is a consummate example of the one monumental flaw in British judicial practices. I mean, yeah, it seems pretty bad. <clears throat> Where evidence and reasoning should be paramount, emotion rules the day. E emotion? <laughs> I love Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> I don't have those. <laughs> the witness's last, latest statement gives us a clear insight into his true nature. What do you mean, his true nature? <laughs> Do you really think a Scotland Yard... Do you think Scotland Yard would make such a glaring omission? After the incident, the omnibus was comprehensively searched by officers of the police. Obviously, the interior of this cubbyhole, as the witness put it, was included in their investigation. Okay. The compartment under the posterior seat was full of the coachman's belongings. It's noted in black and white, here in the police report. Good Lord! The evidence has been tampered with. In order to corroborate Mr. McGilded's story, someone has unlawfully removed everything from under the seat. What? Order! Order! How could such a devious contrivance possibly have been effected, Council? Naturally, we must acknowledge the deficiencies on the constabulary in allowing this to have happened. However, I assure you, when the omnibus was wheeled into the courtroom this morning, the compartment under the seat was not empty. Yeah, w wasn't there stuff in it when we looked inside of it? Or was it empty then? There too? was. Yeah, there was. What, what? Okay. Well, my Nipponese friend. Wait, are you accusing us of stealing the stuff? I'm just saying, like... Did you use your black magic to do this? Uh, mm hmm Me? When the carriage was submitted as evidence... Doubtless you examined it in fine detail, as would any self-respecting practitioner of the law. Looks on you. <laughs> Pray, what did you find the condition of the under-seat compartment to be? Uh, oh, to be sure, the young gentleman will be able to clear this up in a jiffy. Sorry. Go ahead, you tell the court now, fella. How oh, this is all an elaborate excuse by the desperate Lord Van Seeks. So is McGilded a bad dude? 
I mean, he is rich. Well, Council, uh, do you have something to say on this matter? How am I supposed to answer? What can I say about the state of the little compartment under the seat in the omnibus? <clears throat> uh, what are you going to do? <clears throat> Being complete and total ignorance. Yeah. I mean... Uh, we're, an ethic, we're an ethical lawyer. It wasn't empty. Yeah, it's fine. There was a second dead body in there. <laughs> wasn't empty. <sighs> I really don't know if giving this answer is helping my case, is helping my cause as counsel for the defense. But as far as I remember, at least, when I first examined the compartment, I'm fairly certain there were a number of articles inside it, yes. Uh, are you sure, counsel? Ara! Be whist! What are you saying? I got daft door. I thought you're on my side here. You shouldn't have reacted that way, you idiot. What game are you playing? Your task is to defend the man of the stand. But you asked me a question. Why would you say something to compromise his position? Because I'm absolutely required not to lie. Because I'm going for the the good run. 100% <laughs> pacifist ending. As the uh -huh. advocate for the defense in this trial, I confess I'm still not entirely sure where I stand. But it You're seems... standing right there. Okay, good. In the courtroom. You, you got me, dog. But it seems to me that I should state the fact what facts I know I do know as clearly and honestly as possible. Interesting. Fanzix, if you say something racist right now. Tis not altogether pleasing, fella. <laughs> uh, Giant Penguin also says, for anyone curious, Ara be whist is roughly old Irish for shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's really good. I'm simply telling the truth, Mr. McGilded. Well, don't forget that you're supposed to be representing my best interests here, lad. Now then. A fella's memory is a curious thing and not altogether reliable. No, the court must consider the facts. Is McGillan saying my lawyer could be wrong? <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. That there cubbyhole under the seat is as empty as the devil's heart, so it is. Do you think perhaps it would be in your best interests now to admit that you might have been mistaken? Uh, why? Why do I feel like something's not right here? Hmm. I should like the jury to weigh in on this matter, I think. I'm really drunk by this. <laughs> that compartment is designed to house equipment used to maintain the smooth running of the carriage. The guild's rules state that omnibuses should be properly and fully equipped at all times. So it certainly wouldn't have been empty on the night in question. Bitbo isn't that irresponsible. That money lending fleecer and the pick purse are lying. No, but we also just found out that Beppo was lying during number five. God damn it. Damn, he switched. He switched fast. He didn't even have to do a summation examination. <laughs> uh. I can't believe I was nearly taken in. I'll go lick a knife somewhere. Oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> The stinking rich are always stinkers. Nothing but cowards, <laughs> the lot of them. What? Oh, no. It's a trick. Of course it's a trick. Hmm. Quite.
Quite so. I must concur here. God fucking damn it. Well. Not one more, please. With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly at the truth every time. You just said that like when you voted the other way. Ago. <laughs> Shut up. Yes, but, a diff uh, but every time a different truth, it seems. Well, at least three of you are smart. Fuck off, Enzy. My lord, I humbly exhibit the scales of justice. Or three, three, had no knife. <laughs> Clearly, a verdict of not guilty at this time would be wholly inappropriate. Thank you, counsel. But before we proceed any further, there is a matter of the outstanding cross-examination. Counsel for the defense, uh, begin your questioning of the witness, please. Yes, my lord. What just happened? The whole balance of the trial just shifted, almost beyond recognition. The Reaper of the Bailey is at work, it would seem. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, oh, right. I this forgot that we even had this. This is forever ago. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there was anything that stood out, so I guess we're just back to pressing everything? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think this is a press until you find something. Gotcha. So, you were already in the omnibus before it even set off on its run? Well, yeah. I mean, what's the point of spending a joey to make a few bob, eh? That's a rum idea, isn't it? Goddamn. I suppose she means there's no what? point spending money to make money. That actually makes but sense. Sometimes you gotta spend money to make money. That's the whole phrase. Counsel, may I remind you that this girl is a petty thief. Kindly refrain from entertaining her tenants. <laughs> Shut up, Boomer. Well, that does clear up the little mystery at affairs and all. Four paying passengers at five pence apiece make it a twenty to which the cabman testified. And one little scapegrace riding for free. The red cock of a driver always goes for some grab before his last run, see? So that's why I slip into the carriage and get myself in under the seat. Nice and easy, right? But your hiding place is the storage compartment. Full of equipment for the coach, no? Yeah, there's brushes and buckets and whatnot in there, sure. I always chuck all that out and cram it in a corner somewhere. <laughs> no one ever seems to bother much. And yet, according to the report filed by the police officer who first arrived at the scene, the compartment was full of such paraphernalia. Well, I don't know nothing about that. Like I said, I moved all that stuff out so I could hide under the seat. That's all I can tell you. Hmm. Mm. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm voicing the judge, no, okay? That was Zach. <laughs> <laughs> It seems we've reached the end of that line of inquiry. Continue. I love I love that particular animation. This, yeah, that's that's literally a, a yare yare right there. Yeah. Hold it. A waste of time. Why is that? Well, most nights I'm on my own in the god permit at least some of the time. What? I... I beg your pardon? Did you say God permit? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's what my kind call it. You say the omnibus, I suppose. The God permit? Uh-huh. Okay. Get some, some cool British slang. Yeah. Unlimited banner works. The point is, any normal run, the carriage ain't got no one in it for a while. And that's when you come out of your hiding place and get away. 
That's it. Only that night. This cove was set on me from the start. And he didn't budge the whole way, did he? Not one inch. I was totally stuck. Do you mean to tell us that you were present in the carriage for the duration? You were under the seat the entire time while events were unfolded in the enclosed cabin? Yeah. Right, mister. To be sure, to be sure, I was as shocked as anyone. You don't expect to lift the cushion you've been sat on and find a child now, do you? Hmm. So this Miss Lestrade couldn't possibly be the culprit then? Uh. Oh, I, I was about to say giant penguin, but it's not giant penguin. Someone's, someone's coming for Shit. giant penguin's uh, seat. Ring world, Ring world engineer says, uh, I assumed God permit was Cockney rhyming slang, but it isn't. The phrase comes from old ads. They were always saying said something like leaves every Wednesday morning at eight if God permits. And basically it became a Victorian meme. That's funny. Ah, hell yeah. That's funny. That's cool. <laughs> that's a good that's a good Man, where are all the Victorian memes? Bring them back. Can we get some Victor bring back the Victorian memes, everybody? <laughs> but none of the racist ones. Good lord. No. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, blind, blinding in the place. So you couldn't see out into the cabin at all. Not a shot. Most days I push the cushion up with me head and look out to crack. Then I can have a butcher's at who I'm going to fiddle. <laughs> I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. <laughs> I mean, I can have a look. The seat I get under ain't as plush as the other ones. See. So most of the time, the passengers plant themselves opposite. But for some reason that night, this here Irishman spent the whole journey right over me head. Wait, so she said that the, the back cushion is not as comfortable as the front cushion. Right? Yes. Contradiction. <gasps> Tell him that he, yeah. he sat on the not, the not comfortable one. Unless it's because he's so dummy thick it doesn't matter. It's always comfortable for him to sit down. Exactly. Boom. Exactly. You solved it. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion up and peek out, I see. Truth is, I ain't too happy in small, dark places. Feels too much like being thrown in a clink. But it's the only place to hide in them carriages, so it's Obson's choice. Why doesn't she just stick to picking people's pockets in the open, then? I'd say there's some reason that she's not letting on, judging from her demeanor. So, anyways, I was a bit scared, but I had to just stick it out under there. Nothing else for it. All right. When you say a loud bang, do you mean the noise of someone falling to the floor? Could have been, I suppose. I don't remember so well. Point is, it made me jump. And you let out a scream involuntarily. That's right. And then I felt the cushion over my head get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defendant got up in order to help the victim, yes. Or not. It could equally have been the moment the accused stood in order to stab his victim, could it not? Well, girl, did you see what happened at that crucial moment? Yeah, I saw it. <sighs> I pushed up the cushion and had a quick butchers while I had the chance. Well, I had the chance, didn't I? The Irishman was sitting up the bloke who had fallen on the floor in the opposite seat, on the seat opposite. That matches Mr. McGilder's account, of course. But then, the fella suddenly turns around and looks right at me. I sunk back down again, but it was too late by then. I should never have risked looking. Right. 
And when Mr. McGilded discovered you, he pulled you out from, from your hiding place? I was scared stiff, I was. He dragged me out and sat me down on the seat and all. Next to the victim, Mr. Mason. Yeah. The bloke had a knife in his guts. He was still bleeding. Then the carriage lurched a bit and he ended up falling onto me. Oh my god. Ugh, how awful. Both me, both me hands got covered in blood. It made me feel sick as a dog. Okay, so that corroborates the other story that people saw. Both her hands covered in blood. That must be what the rooftop passages saw. Okay, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> there we, and there we go. After that, I believe you talked with Mr. McGilded for a while. Is that correct? He asked me some stuff. Wanted to know my name and what I was up to in that. Then I heard something from up above. Someone screamed. Yes, Mr. First on the roof deck, one would presume. Well, I didn't want no one to see me face, so I didn't look up. Then the horses were drawn up smartish, and this here Irishman says to me, Get back under the seat. I'll see what you can get away later. That was good, Wes. Hmm. All six members of the jury have decided the defendant was innocent. For one brief shining moment, yes. It's clear that they are all still very unsure. If we could just find some conclusive piece of evidence among this new testimony, I'm sure we would clinch the verdict we want. Yes, I think you're right. And I have this niggling feeling... Now they brought back your favorite word. Yeah, I know. Something's bothering me, but I can't just quite put my finger on it. Oh, there is a contradiction. I thought this was one of the press ones. No, oh, okay. All right, find the contradiction. Uh, oh, actually, no, I lied. This is a, okay, this is, this game's great so far. This is a dumb moment. You have to press one of the statements a second time. Oh, hate that shit. Which is really shit. dumb. I hate that shit. Yeah, no, I hate that it's, shit. It's, it's very dumb. Great, great game. Love the writing, love the world. This is a dumb thing that they did. Uh, you have to put, hold on, I'm just going to tell you which one you have to push again, because that's really dumb. Very waste of time, nothing to show for troubles, can't see a blind thing in that hiding place, it's pitch in there, but after a while, I hear this loud bang, nearly jumped out of my skin, and the scream just came out. I imagine it's that, because that was when she talked about what she saw, uh, and he saw her, and then yeah, the swell, and that was like what what happened after he found it's her. it's the one it's the third one oh whew, okay not not none of the ones i expected ah, stupid. push the press the press the third one one more time sorry come on uh this this tell you i can't see a blind thing uh let me guess there's like a little hole that she could see through or something Hold it. So, you couldn't see out into the cabin at all? I expect the player to, like, know this. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's... it's. Like you'd be I so really like, hope it was an oversight, but it's... Yeah, it's I feel dumb. like a normal player would just start, like, presenting the character's evidence to every statement and then just lose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right themselves. Yeah, it's, just it's, keep going. It's all the same McGil thing. Mc yeah, McGilded's gonna say something in a second. Well, no. There you go. Well, no. God, what is he saying to this? I don't like this at all. <laughs> Why is he reacting to that statement? Okay. He's he's got a he's got a naughty joke. He's like, <laughs> buttholes. Is something <laughs> funny, Mister McGilded? <laughs> he's laughing. Oh, oh. oh. soup. <laughs> <laughs> All time classic. I do apologize. Was there something the matter, Council? I'm just wondering if Miss Lestrade's last comment made something occur to you, perhaps. You seem to be thinking something to yourself. Oh, oh, no, no. Twas nothing important. 
I was feeling bad for the poor lasses all. I remember feeling desperate myself as a young lad. Shut up in the dark. Twas terrifying, so it was. I was so desperate as a young lad when my, when my dad gave me a loan of one million guinea. <laughs> God damn it. I see. Yes, I'm sure we can all sympathize. I'm still scared of the dark now. <laughs> God damn it. Being trapped in that closet when Cosmo died really scarred me. Yeah. Oh no. I, I don't know about yourself. But I find that the darkness seems to make everything you hear seem that much louder as well. Yeah. Uh, I suppose it does. Maybe. Miss the Strat! Did you hear something that night? Anything? An unusual noise, perhaps? Nah, not really. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. Jabbers! There's no need to tell the whole world to be foibles, you little scam. <laughs> what is He's this? What's he? Foibles. What's he doing? What's he doing? Giving the Dave the Barbarian catchphrase here. I don't remember that show no. very well. That's fucking Dave the Barbarians. Barbarian. The Jabbers! What a pity. If only Mr. Lestrade had heard something, it might have given us a vital new clue. Yes. What should we make of that last statement of hers? Well, <laughs> time for a textbook Ace Attorney thing. <laughs> the thing that literally means nothing is profoundly important, and we're going to bullshit about it for a little bit. Let's go. My lord, I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. <laughs> Profoundly important? But, but all she said was that she heard nothing. Yes, which is the profoundly important part. I'm almost sure of it. <laughs> I'm like 16% sure. <laughs> mm, I'm almost sure that I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern Mind Council. God damn it. Uh, nevertheless... I think the same. Miss Gina Lestrade, you will supplement your formal testimony by repeating that last statement, please. What? Supplement? What are you on about? Don't give me all your fancy talk. I know what you're trying to do, but it won't work on me. That's right. Insult the judge. Always a good move. I was straining my ears to work out what was going on, but all I could hear was snoring. Uh, do we have something that contradicts that, or are we just pressing this one again? I don't think we do. I mean, nothing jumps uh, out at me because it wouldn't. That wouldn't make any sense. No, I, I can't think of anything that would contradict this. I mean, you We've can always just press it, and this. then if there's nothing, then... Yeah, then We've we'll used start. every piece of evidence here already. Yeah. So, you were straining to hear what was happening the entire time, since the moment you hid yourself? Um, not exactly, no. Sorry? Well, there was no one in the cabin to start with. I couldn't. I could just push up. Push, ugh, I could just push the cushion up and have a butcher's to see what was what. But then, when I saw this swell getting on, I got my head down so he didn't notice me. And Mr. McGill did sat on the seat under which you were hiding, correct? Yeah. Would you add him and Eva, eh? What a mug. <laughs> would you add him and Eva? That's really good. So then, all I could do was listen. 
I was waiting to jump out of there as soon as I heard him leave, see? But would he? Not likely. Even though he stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. So I just had to stay put and listen to him driving his pigs to market. Snoring like an old dog he was. Damn. Get dunked on McGill. So she didn't hear wait, so she didn't hear the door open. When did Mr. Mason get on? Dun dun dun. <laughs> oh. Miss Lestrade, what you have just told this court is clearly at odds with is clearly at odds with the facts. Uh, at odds? Are you sure, man? Absolutely. It seems my learned Nipponese friend is not as dull-witted as I feared. So Van Zeeks realized it too. Counsel, I must insist that you bolster your claim with evidence, or some complicit party's name at the very least. Yes, my lord. I expect you to demonstrate this alleged contradiction to the court. According to Miss Lestrade, whilst she was hiding in the omnibus that night, she heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGilded snoring. But think, Ryanosuke, think! Slap! Double. Ooh, double slap. Double slap. There's something else it's she super, should have heard. It's super effective. To a person, <laughs> Mr. Mason. Very well, my lord. Allow me to elaborate. On a particular sound that Miss Lestrade could not have failed to hear on the night in question. The sound very clearly explained by the presence of the following person. Beppo. Right. I forget that his name is nickname is thrice fired. It's a good fucking nickname. It is. It's really good. Thrice fired and stuff. Thrice fired Mason. Absolutely, she'd be like a fucking famous anime character. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Who who uses like a three shot or like who uses like a revolver with three barrels or something? Yeah. Ooh. A sharpshooter, thrice fired Mason. What does That's she want? cool. Thrice fired the Mason. Yeah. Why has there not been like a badass anime luck character who's like, oh, I play Russian roulette all the time, but I only use a three barreled revolver. And then everyone's like, oh. Oh, so it's like a one in three chance. Okay. Yeah. I was like, Instead like literally, like, until you got to the last part of that sentence, so I was like, there definitely is. I was so confused where you were going with that. I was like, there definitely is a character like that, Wes. <laughs> yeah, but no, he's he's just a cooler version of whatever that character is. Yeah, that's fair. Because <laughs> there's less barrels. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Or he uses a one barrel gun, and it just misfires every time. <laughs> Look. Lucky. Thrice fired, Mason? Yes, my lord. The sound that Miss Lestrade cannot have failed to hear is that Ooh. of the victim, Mr. Mason boarding the omnibus. We got a big sweeping point that yeah, time. No, it, was, it was maybe a little over the top, like a contradiction for that. But Everything's sure. big and sweeping in, in Britain. It's true. Order! Order! Explain your reasoning, counsel. Miss Lestrade, allow me to confirm something. You claimed earlier that you were the first person on board the omnibus. Is that correct? Yeah, of course I was. I got on while the driver was in the pub, didn't I? And the next person to board the omnibus was Mr. McGilded. That it was. Not a soul was in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least, not in plain sight. So you were. Uh, so you were, to all intents and purposes, alone in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus at that time. Did I not just say as much? I wasn't travelling with anyone else, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I saw him get on, remember? Through the crack under the seat cushion. He was on his own for sure. And... From what we've heard, the carriage made a number of stops after that on its onward journey. During which time, did you not hear the door opening or closing at all? Nah, 
I never heard it. That's exactly what I was listening for, weren't I? Waiting for this swell to leave. In which case, when and how did the victim end up in the carriage? Ugh. We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Therefore, Miss Lestrade's statement about what she did or did not hear is at odds with the facts. Yes, this petty thief's statement was clearly flawed. Lord Van Zeeks. Yes, he knew. He knew all too well that there was an inconsistency in Miss Lestrade's statement. <laughs> it would seem words of thanks are in order for my learned friend. I'm not your friend, pal. I'm not your pal, guy. I actually fucking hate you. <laughs> You've I'm been not your... condescending and racist to me <laughs> our entire course of knowing each other. <laughs> what are you talking about? You have demonstrated matters impeccably. This witness and her colorful statements are entirely unreliable. Her words are convenient untruths, nothing more. Mm. He's dead, right? How could the victim possibly not have bought with the omnibus? That makes no sense whatsoever. And this girl is a pickpocket, let's not forget that. Don't do it, Grandma! No! Shit. Grandma! Oh. She... She didn't even say anything. I didn't want to judge the dear little mite just because she has some rather naughty ways. But I must say... I can't abide liars. And neither can I. God fucking damn it. M Mr. Foreman! I didn't want to judge the girl just because she has some... Less than salubrious ways. I guarantee you, you did. But I must say, I cannot abide liars. Are they oh. going to make us do a second summation exam examination right now? Oh, boy. <sighs> God damn it. Uh. Mr. Marahodo, that's five jury members leaning towards guilty. Thank you, Susato. I can't count. Wait, did you drink oh. what was in there before? We should have studied that while we were doing law, too. <laughs> well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. God, stop calling me that. To the considerable troubles you have spared me. Yes, very refreshing. Ah! Ah! What are you playing at? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you useless Eastern Amadam? Oh, well. Well, geez, sure. I think uh, I think this is time for me to quit. <laughs> well, you. time for me to hit the old dusty, uh, dusty trail. trail. Yowzer. God damn it! <laughs> yes! What? This is carnage! It's perfect! Again! You are a killer, sir! <laughs> you are a <laughs> killer! <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Jova number two is the only one left! Mr. Narahodo, the way this is going. I know. I can't find some new way to convince everyone of Mr. McGilded's in innocence. The judge will rule, and we'll have lost. I very much wanted to believe the words of one of London's most respected gentlemen. But... Those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Nice. 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 Don't let her. Don't let her. Yes, the witness's last statement seems to have revealed a critical inconsistency in her story. 
However, if we consider the possibility that her statement is in fact the truth, it may shed an entirely new light on this whole case. What are you saying? Card, sir? I'm sorry, sir. Whatever do you mean? Counsel, I will not tolerate you attempting to prorogue by adjudication. adjudication. I will not provide you getting pierogies in my adjudication. <laughs> unless you brought one for me, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Explain yourself at once. When the accused boarded the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Subsequently, the carriage door was not heard opening a single time, as testified by the witness in the stand. And yet the victim's body was found inside the carriage. If this petty thieves' words are to be believed, how do you explain the victim's miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? There's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. Oh. Hmm. Huh. What do you think? Interesting. Number two seems impossible. Yeah, I feel like we would have seen that somewhere. Unless they freaking like threw him through the skylight. Yeah, which seems like malarkey. I'm leaning towards three. Same. Because, I mean, I don't know how he could have been. If he was in there already, that means that McGilded is lying. And that's right. not going to help us. Right, 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 right. But how... How would he have even put in there? God damn it, I wish we could see the picture from this, what they saw through the sky, sky roof again. Wait, 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 wait. I just realized it. Holy shit. The picture we do have. Look at this man's outfit. Uh-huh. Yeah, what about it? Looks like somebody else's outfit. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh. And uh, interesting that Thrice Fired Mason has this, uh, you know, little little strand of blonde hair here. Huh. Let me see. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Let me see. Thrice Fired Mason. Can we see the people? Open the doors. There's all the people. Oh, no, he did have that. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Damn. All right. Well. Well. Maybe, maybe, maybe Gina's thrice fired Mason's daughter. I mean, honestly, they do. They do dress kind of similarly. Thrice fired Mason Lestrade, mm -hmm. or Gina Lestrade Mason. Damn. Damn. I'm sad. I thought I was big brain, big brain hour. Maybe, maybe does the does the missing button have something to do with it? Oh, I didn't think about that. Or are you just you just baiting me right now? You're baiting me right now. You fuck. <laughs> uh, Shadow Call Shadow Hundred Bit saying Zach over here sounding exactly like Ryan. Lol, <laughs> get fucked. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I don't know. What are you thinking, uh, Fridge? I mean, here's the thing. We got plenty of things we can get wrong. We're, we're doing we're doing okay. Yeah, I mean. I, I I will be shocked if it's the second one. Same. I mean, I guess he. I mean, he could have come in at the same. T no, because that would still mean he's a liar. Yeah. Well, and also she she saw him coming in, and he was like, "No, he didn't come with somebody else." Right. So I mean, three is the one that makes the most sense, but none of them really make sense. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Zach? 
Yeah, I, 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 at the very least, I want to see that the last one, if it gets us anything. Um, yeah. But we'll see. They all, they all, there's something wrong with all of them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the victim must have been placed in the carriage after he was killed. Tell me, my learned friend, what was the function of that obviously in your last sentence? <laughs> to, to, uh, it was, an, it was an adjective. Okay. <laughs> hmm? Well said, Lord Van Zeeks. The obviously is troubling me also. No, no! That's really not the point. The point is that the victim must have been moved into the carriage afterwards. Are you saying we're stupid if we didn't get it? Is that what you're saying? Then answer yes. me this. How could a cadaver have been placed inside a moving carriage? Fuck. Well... Obviously, uh, I mean, like, you keep, you keep using that word. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> I shall have to penalize the defense heavily for this irrelevant rambling. Okay. Uh, I must learn to ramble more relevantly. <laughs> <laughs> the penalty is evidently not heavy enough, judging from those Nipponese eyes. Okay. So I ask you again. Stop being real racist! If this petty thief's words yeah. are to be believed, how do you explain the victim's miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? <sighs> There's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. Um... I don't think... I don't think there's a way that he could have been there already. Yeah. But I also, like... Stupid. That's not a door. Hey, let's go try to say that he was thrown in through the fucking skylight. Oh, well, you can well, open. I mean, I you wanna... can open the skylight. It looks like so. I mean, again, I want to say it's ridiculous, but this is a Phoenix Wright. This is an Ace of Dirty game, so yeah. The more ridiculous is probably the more accurate. Yeah. Uh. Sorry, so wait, what are we saying? Two? Just do a happy option, too, because everyone's spoiling the game for us in chat. <laughs> if the door wasn't <laughs> opened even once, the only explanation is that the victim entered through the enclosed cab, entered the enclosed cabin some other way. I wondered what new fantasy you would come up with in your blind panic. Penalty! Plot twist, all the choices were wrong. <laughs> but behold, the omnibus is here for all to see. Like, you had to make it to this point in the case with at least three things left, or else you lose instantly. Only one side of the enclosed cabin is furnished with a door. The other only has windows. Fixed windows, which cannot possibly open. In short, there is no entrance to the cabin other than the door. But there could be. There's one possibility you haven't considered. Oh, really? Yes. Really. One really? Other way. Really, really. One other way. Really, really, really. Really, 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 really. really. <laughs> one other way inside that isn't the door. Another opening. The use of which allowed the victim to appear inside the enclosed cabin. All right, counsel. The defense will identify the location for the court. Oh, they are going to see the skylight, damn. Here is the omnibus on which the incident occurred. Now, where on earth is this entrance by which you propose the victim entered the cabin? Yeah, we're, we're in agreement on the, on the skylight, right? I mean, that's the only it's the only option I can see on this little diagram. Yeah, unless they're in. Take that! If they're, if they're tricking us, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> the answer is obvious. It can only have been the skylight. 
I say, the skylight? Objection. Your ludicrous proposal almost has me lost for words. However... Shut up. The skylight <laughs> may well be large enough for someone to pass Objection. through. Don't interrupt me. So you claim. But do you have a shred of evidence to support your addle-brained theory? Fuck. Both Mr. McGilded and Miss Lestrade said, said the same in their testimonies. They each claim to have heard a thud, s such as the noise made by something f someone falling to the floor. Yes, which has already been explained. As the sound of the victim falling from his seat, having been assaulted with the dagger. Oh, it was him being dropped in through the skylight. Yes, it has, but... Would a man slipping from the seat onto the floor really have made such a loud noise as the witnesses describe? A noise loud enough to cause Miss Lestrade to let out an involuntary cry, in fact? Good, good gracious. Perhaps, in fact... That was the moment that the victim made his entrance into the cabin. No, let me rephrase that. The victim didn't enter the cabin as such. He fell into it. You're now suggesting that the victim fell from the skylight into the cabin? That's simply impossible. The only problem with this theory is that Beppo would have fucking known. How can you be so sure? Because if the victim had fallen inside through the skylight, as you say, the passengers on the roof deck would have seen it happen. And yet, no one person made mention of such events in their testimony. Well, um, yes, that's true, but... Might a humble fella make a wee comment here? M Mr. McGilded. To be sure now, the two fellas who were sat on the roof that testified afore said nothing of the victim falling through the skylight. But it seems to me, my lord, that is not so much of a case that I'm not saying, but... Uh, I... Tis a case of them being unable to say. What? I think perhaps the two fellas do be having something of a compelling reason not to be not to mention what happened. Would you not agree, fine ladies and gentlemen of the jury? <laughs> oh my my goodness, surely not. There's two chaps on the roof. Oh, you mean yeah. the ones who stuck that knife in the man were... Ah! 